Los Angeles fans are in a gay mood. And so are the Dodgers. They take batting practice. Manager Alston and General Manager Bavese smilingly parry questions about a possible Dodger sweep. Batting champion Tommy Davis takes a few swings. And so does Bill Scourin. Yogi Berra holds the record for World Series appearances. American League President Joe Cronin is still rooting for the Yankees. And so is Yankee General Manager Roy Haney. Commissioner Ford Freck, the only neutral spectator, studies his program. Whitey Ford, one of baseball's greatest clutch hurlers, warms up. It's a rematch with Sandy Koufax, who beat the Yankee Southpaw in the series opener. The weather is perfect, and Dodger Stadium is filled to capacity. Koufax walks with confident strides. Can he wrap up the series today? Koufax starts off by fanning Quebec. Sandy's wonderful rhythm and leverage are graphically evident in slow motion film as he pitches to Ford in the third. Whitey meets the ball and pulls a grounder toward first base. Bill Scourin moves over to his right and makes a fine backhanded stop on the ball. He turns, takes a couple of steps in line with the bag, and crosses to Koufax, who has hustled across to cover first base. In the Yankee fourth, Richardson lifts a short fly into center. Three Dodgers converge on the ball, but it drops safely, and Richardson gets a double. The camera slows down the action again in the fifth, with Colfax pitching and Elston Howard on first. Cleet Boyer swings and wraps a ground smash that looks like it's headed for left field. But there goes Maury Wills into deep short. And he stretches out to make a backhanded stab of the ball. He whirls and throws to second. And Krasuski makes a diving catch for the force out of Elston Howard. That's the dazzling type of play that makes baseball thrilling to watch. It's still a scoreless mound duel in the Dodger fifth inning when Frank Howard comes out. The big Dodger steps into Ford's first pitch and sends it rocketing into left field. It's back, back, away back for a home run into the corner of the second deck. That has to be at least a 430-footer. It's the first one ever hit into that sector. Howard's homer gives the Dodgers a one to nothing lead, and he's given a hero's welcome in the dugout. The press box is throbbing with action since the World Series has accorded the greatest coverage of any sports event. It also has the greatest radio and television audience. Mickey Mantle steps up in the Yankee seven, and Koufax gets his sign. Mickey takes a terrific cut at a first pitch fastball, and there it goes. It sails over the 380-foot marker, and that ties the score at one and one. That's the 15th World Series homer for Mantle, tying the record held for 30 years by Babe Ruth. Whitey Ford, who has allowed only two hits so far, faces Gilliam in the Dodger seven. Gilliam slaps a high hopper toward third, and Boyer spears it with a leaping catch. He gets off a good throw to first base. But Pepitone loses the ball in the white shirt background. It hits him on the arm and gets by him, bouncing down the right field line. Before Joe can retrieve the ball, Gilliam races around the third to put a run in scoring position with nobody out. Ford checks the runner at third and then fires. 
but Willie Davis is ready for him and ties into the first pitch for a long fly to Mantle. Gillian sprints for home and scores easily to give the Dodgers the lead again, 2-1. to one. It's still 2-1 to one going into the ninth when Bobby Richardson singles to center to lead off the inning. The Yankees now have posed a quick and dangerous threat. Taranowski is warming up in the bullpen. Roseboro talks it over with Koufax on the mound. In the dugout, manager Hout hopes for a rally. Koufax and he snaps a curve over the plate and Tom Crash takes a third strike. But the pressure grows for Koufax. Here comes Mantle to the plate. The Dodger lefty looks toward first and then slips a third strike past Mantle. A slow breaking curveball. Elston Howard is next. But one more out and it's all over. Houck is beginning to fear the worst. Koufax pitches and Howard drives the ball to deep short. Wills makes a fine play on the ball. Then he gets off a quick throw to second base. It's in the dirt, but Krasuski has it, and the Dodgers win. No, no, it's not over. Krasuski has dropped the ball. Umpire Gorman has reversed his decision. Richardson is safe at second base. Elston Howard is on first, and the Yankees are still very much alive. A hit now, and anything can happen. If he's shaken by the mishap, Popax doesn't show it. He jams Hector Lopez with his first pitch, and Lopez hits a slow bouncer toward short. Wills comes dancing in, takes it on a big hop, and without breaking stride, throws to first base. The Dodgers win 2-1 to one and sweep the series in four straight. All Bedlam breaks loose on the field as the jubilant Dodgers try to reach Kofax, who started the sweep in the opener and then also was there to finish it. Ford hurled a brilliant two-hitter in the finale, but superb overall pitching of the Dodgers dominated the classic. Never before in all their wonderful years had the Yankees lost four in a row in a World Series. For the Dodgers, therefore, it was a glorious and dramatic triumph unsurpassed in World Series history.